Alrighty, uh, so what we're going to do is this is going to be um, the last video for this week. Um, we're actually going to do one more video uh, that I'll put up uh, at the beginning of next week um, for just lighting and rendering to kind of finish up our troll project. Um, we're uh, not going to be doing a final uh, in terms of a test, um, but uh, we will kind of continue with troll progress this week, some mini quizzes this week, and of course mini quizzes next week. Uh, and also, of course, you'll be turning in your final project uh, end of next week. Um, so I just want to kind of point that out, but I did want to show you guys the basics of painting, um, so you can do some texture painting, some basic coloring, and then like I said, that'll kind of get us to the point where you've got pretty much just about everything for your troll, you can build a model, put a little bit of clothing and armor on it, do some UV mapping from all the videos we've done before, uh, and even get into doing a bit of sculpting and painting. Um, and obviously if you don't get too crazy in the sculpting and painting, that's okay, just more than anything, it's just trying to show me that you're understanding a lot of these things. Um, I know it's been, you know, having to learn a new software than what we normally would use it for. Uh, but yeah, I just want to kind of point that out. And that's what we're going to do today's video. Uh, I did want to point something out in the shading layout here. Um, for whatever reason, my maps actually baked kind of, um, at least some of them baked inverted. Um, I do not know why that was happening in here because um, I actually tried to recreate it uh, and it didn't have a problem. It baked normally. Um, so, uh, by default, Blender should bake fine. I, I've gone and tried to recreate the, the, this kind of inverted effect I'm getting, particularly in the armor you can see there. Um, and I couldn't, um, or at least not with the default settings I had. Um, so keep in mind that you might just want to kind of think about that as you, um, as you bake stuff. It, it default should work okay. Um, you are baking normal maps for working inside a Blender. Um, but just to point that out, um, of course, if you go to um, the little rendering tab here, right? Remember, it's kind of the, right below the, uh, in the scene area here, right? It's kind of like your property section. Um, you know, there's that the little kind of a wrench screwdriver. It's kind of basic options for whatever active tools there. Right below that, right, is kind of one looks like a microwave or a briefcase kind of thing. Uh, the next one down looks like a printer. The next one looks like kind of image. Um, and then, of course, we get to like materials and texture stuff down here and our modifiers, the wrench, right? Uh, but this one right here, remember, is your renderer. Uh, and when you're gonna do, uh, uh, so you can kind of set up your rendering options. Um, Cycles is kind of the older renderer in Blender. Eevee's kind of the newer one. Uh, but Cycles, remember, in Render Engine is where the baking is at, right? There is a section kind of here called Bake, right? And remember, we go over the process of having two different geometries in the other videos, so I kind of go over baking a couple times in those videos. Um, for whatever reason, I just don't know what the settings were weird on this, and I got some inversions. Um, I t like I said, I tried to recreate it and couldn't, uh, or at least, you know, I, I used the same settings I have here and it worked fine. Uh, so this is kind of more of like a, a be aware. Um, so when you do the baking, one of the things if you're getting some inversion stuff, what you might want to do when you bake is try to bake with an inversion, right? You kind of see the uh, like influence section here um, where you can switch to your different uh, spaces, object or tangent. Um, tangents generally for character creatures what you want. Um, and of course the bake type is normal, right? We kind of uh, pick the actual normal map baking right there. Um, but you can actually kind of have it invert. Um, so it might have been that I accidentally switched that to Y. I don't think I did though. Um, when I did it with these normal settings, it when I tried to recreate it, it worked fine and it didn't do this inversion. So you guys might actually be fine. Um, but if you need to, you can actually kind of invert one of the axes. Um, and I think it's the Y axis that you'd want to maybe switch. So if you are getting that issue where it's baking backwards or like inverted in kind of one direction, like it looks like it's pushing in instead of pushing out, um, you might want to try kind of um, in the bake section here, um, the swizzle kind of stuff for swizzle RGB, um, you can actually invert for the different axes, right? Um, so just be aware, you might need to change one of these if you're getting a bug. Uh, like I said, when I tried to recreate it, it didn't seem to have a problem. Uh, so it might've just been a weird anom anomaly that popped up. Um, you figure Blender would bake its own normal maps to work fine in there. And like I said, when I tried to recreate it, it did work fine. So um, like I said, I was pretty sure everything was all set up properly. Um, I think there was just a weird anomaly that popped up with the bake or something like that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so just kind of keep that in mind. That's something to kind of think about uh, for your baking of normal maps. Uh, remember, the other videos show you how to kind of save images, right? Particularly in shading. Right here, this little cool pull down, you go to images, you can save your image. Um, remember, you have to kind of to plug it in and see it on models. You have to add texture, uh, image texture, and you say you can kind of, um, 
it creates this. You can find the image that's been loaded in or baked or even kind of um, open it up, right? Um, I w you do find that you probably want to switch your colors based to raw. Usually normal maps um, I like to be on raw, kind of like in Maya. A lot of you guys remember uh, from uh, earlier classes with Arnold in Maya, you had to switch your colors based to raw. So keep that in mind. And it's also good to kind of have an intervening normal map node here. Uh, and you can get that by just add um, vector normal map uh, and just kind of attach color and normal. Usually if you drag it in between the lines that already connect them, it'll actually kind of connect them for you. And you guys kind of remember when we've done some of this stuff for normal maps in Maya. Um, so you'll notice that kind of uh, Blender ha and a lot of packages nowadays have some kind of workflow like this for materials if you want or need it. Uh, so just kind of try to remind you guys about those. Usually you want to tell to use the UV map, um, stuff like that. Uh, you can actually turn the strength up for these, right? So if I was to go to armor and you said it's kind of got its own map, I can actually turn the strength up for the normal map there, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, so just kind of remember that stuff. And, and remember in the uh, bake section here, um, you, if, if you need to, you might need to invert one of these, right? You can just kind of pick it and say negative, X, uh, negative Y instead of positive Y or negative X. You can kind of invert one of the axes if you need to if the bake's weird. Like I said, I tried to recreate it and it didn't seem to have a problem. So um, I'm gonna chalk it up to that it just went weird for me. Uh, occasionally it happens, right? Um, also, uh, you know, I'm getting to know Blender fairly well, but you know, still kind of, um, you know, don't know it quite as well as other software like Maya or Modo or Mudbox, um, which I've been teaching for years. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? That that might be something you have to kind of take a look at um, when you're baking, if you're having, if you're having some baking issues. Uh, in this case, this will work well enough. It'll look good enough for what we want. Um, you see with all this plugged in, the normal maps are, are looking fairly well, just inverted. Um, and that's just kind of something to be aware of. Um, of course, you can switch back to your EV rendering engine if you want to. Um, and what I want to do is I want to go to texture paint, right? Because there is a texture paint um, workspace, right? So we can click on that. And you see this takes us to kind of a painting workspace here. Um, so we can kind of, you know, zoom in if we want to, kind of uh, rotate like we normally would. Um, what we can do is we can actually go right over to here and you'll see that it's kind of just showing the normal map, right? So kind of right here, this little kind of browser picture, really it's just all your textures, right? Uh, so in this case, if we wanted to, what we could do is we could always click on this one right here for new image, right? Um, so we can click on that and it's going to bring this up again, right? And we can call this, uh, say, body color, right? So underscore color. Uh, and of course, we can pick our resolution. Um, in this case, we'll just do 2048. Um, like I said, if your computers can run a little bit better, uh, mine can actually totally handle multiple 496s. Um, this might be a good default for a lot of you guys, though. Um, and then we can hit OK. And remember, we saw this when we were in that shading menu, right? When we kind of go to add texture, image texture, it would do exactly that. It would kind of uh, bring this up and then you can click on this one and it would do the exact same thing. Um, so uh, in texture painting, here we go. And what we could do is we could of course go in here and we'll see that there's body color and we could turn that on. Now in this case, you're not really seeing it on the body, right? Um, that's because it's not plugged into the body shader yet, right? Um, so one of the things we could of course do is um, just in texture paint, uh, remember, there's more than one way than just going to shading and kind of dropping it in and plugging it in, which you can do. Um, but if we go back to texture paint, um, remember, towards the bottom here, right, just kind of this, you've noticed it all kind of looks the same in Blender, right? It's kind of got that consistent interface over there, and there's just other different focus stuff when you go to these different layouts. Um, but remember, that kind of bottom one is texture for you can load in a texture. Um, the one above it kind of looks like a, a, a reddish kind of... Um, a ball, right? That kind of looks like it's got a checkerboard on it, but a large checkerboard. This brings up your material um, for this guy, right? Um, and of course, you can go to here to pick different materials, like armor has its own material. This is kind of the, the body material. And you'll notice that if we scroll down here, you'll see that there's already the normal map plugged in, right? So much like Maya actually has kind of the materials where you can see the sliders and um, you can click on checkerboards, um, you'll notice Blender actually uses these little dots. Interesting though, how much it's like Maya though now, isn't it, right? It's kind of one of those things that they kind of, uh, with the 2.8 series, they took some of the coolest stuff from Blender, from Maya and Moto basically, uh, and incorporated it in here um, and so like that. So the nice thing is a lot of you guys seem to have reasonably acclimated yourselves to Blender 
um, particularly with turn on industry compatible because it, it's really going to work a lot like uh, Maya. Um, so base color, right? And you see there's a metallic slider, your specular controls, transmit, like, so it's got a lot of your basic stuff in here. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to do transparency maps. Um, like I told you guys, we're because we're on a weird schedule with the distance learning and we started a couple weeks late. Um, so, um, but remember, you can always just kind of paint um, a transmission map, uh, if you will. Um, and like any map, like a spec map, if you paint black, usually that's transparent, white will be transparent. You can do hair, fur, uh, leaves for uh, trees that way, uh, capes with tears in them. Uh, but we're just not going to get to that for this stuff. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to base um, color uh, and I'm going to click on the little dot. And you soon click on the little dot here that you can actually see that it's got all this stuff. Um, so we can go to image texture. Uh, and there you'll see it kind of just drops on this kind of default pink. Um, because now what we have to do is image texture is plugged into base color, but we either have to create a new one, which we already created it, or open something that already exists. But we already created a new one and we don't need to open it from outside. So kind of this little kind of little, it looks like a landscape image, click on that. There's body color and there's your color. Now, if you don't want to really see the specularity on here so much, that's because you have some, um, uh, some, let's see here. Oh, I don't really see anything on there for that. Um, I think that's just kind of a default shader with um, materials on. A uh, viewport shading kind of just does that. Um, if you want to see it more full kind of uh, uh, render, you can. Remember, wireframe, uh, kind of shaded, um, kind of full material. Uh, we'll start with this one for now, though. But uh, just keep mic, right? So um, we can kind of bring this back up. Uh, so if we go back to the kind of tool stuff here, we can actually see that um, you can see your material there. You can see your brushes, um, any basic colors, right? Um, your blend modes for your mixing. Uh, this stuff will all be up here as well. So uh, there we go. I'll just make sure to kind of pick body color here so we can kind of see it there. But that's how you would, without even going to the shading network, you can actually plug in your textures, kind of more like you would in Maya. Um, and of course, this one right up here, your wrench um, screwdriver gives you kind of your basic color stuff. Uh, so now what we could do if we wanted to is we could go in here. And of course, we can see that we have some brushes here. Uh, regular draw brush, soften, smear, clone, fill, mask. Um, so in this case, we'll go to fill. I will right, we'll click on that. And of course, you can see up here um, or here, you have colors. So if I want, I can go to color and kind of probably pick like a greenish color. There we go. And what we could do is we could then kind of fill it, all right? Fill bucket. And now we have that green. Now with that on, you'll notice you can actually kind of turn on because with the default no pixel color at all. When you have kind of the um, the material one on, you don't really see it that well, right? Uh, but now you see when you turn it on, you can actually see your normal mapping and all that stuff, all right? So it's kind of cool. You can kind of get to see your basic, um, all your stuff with this one. So that's kind of like wireframe shaded, um, and that's kind of like texture, normal maps, um, material properties. Um, so to see your actual normal mapping, you can kind of click on that one. Uh, so now that we've got that, of course, we can go to brush. And if we wanted to, we could pick kind of a color. Um, so we'll pick kind of a lighter, much lighter green like that. And of course, uh, as before, right, S and left mouse drag, you can make your brush bigger, right? Uh, the brackets kind of next to P, right? P and O and all that stuff. Um, you know, there's those little kind of bracket keys that they are kind of like parentheses, but not quite. Um, they look more square. Those will make your brush size go bigger. Uh, and of course, radius right here, strength right here, right? So we can actually bring the strength down for this brush a lot, just like we would mud box, make it really subtle. And what we could do is we could go in here, we could start to kind of paint that basic color. So once again, you'll see that we're kind of able to do uh, projection painting. And you'll notice that we have kind of our, um, we can always make this a little smaller if we wanted to. You'll notice we have our stroke controls with spacing, right? We have um, our texture. So if we want to do tiled or view plane or something like that, right? So you might like view plane a little bit more. Um, uh, keep that in mind though, that, that those kind of will affect it. Um, you might like tiled, it's kind of up to you. Um, the default usually seems to work fairly fine, right? So what you can do is you can just start to go in here and you could paint color, right? 
Now we went with a lower strength because that really allows us to kind of slowly build up kind of the color we want, right? Now what you'll notice is this is 3D projection painting, just like Mudbox, right? It's basically going to ignore any seams that are there as you paint your color. So you don't need to paint a little bit underneath the arms, right? There we go. And you'll notice the projection painting isn't quite as slick. Sometimes it kind of doesn't work quite as well as Mudboxes does at uh, projection angles, but um, you'll see ultimately it still works, right? And it'll ultimately still paint over kind of your uh, projection area. So you just might need to be a little more careful when you're painting. But you'll see that Blender actually has projection painting built in, right? So uh, keep that in mind. Um, if you are looking for layers, uh, you're not going to find it. Uh, this is actually one of, unfortunately, the drawbacks uh, currently, in my opinion, for Blender's 3D painting tools is uh, it doesn't have a true um, kind of layer system, right? Um, do you have to use layers? No, right? But um, they can be useful for sometimes when you need them, right? I probably could have picked maybe a more greenish color, but uh, this is more about kind of just showing you guys that actual projection painting all is inside of um, Blender, right? kind of slowly kind of add a little bit of color in there so uh, keep that in mind right that this actually has this functionality built in right that you can actually go in and do full 3d projection painting just like you expect from um, mudbox right and of course like I said you can kind of turn this one on this one kind of looks really muted and dull um, I might have a texture actually on so I think I was painting with a little bit of a pattern there <laughs> You can actually see there's a bit of a pattern there. Um, and that's okay, right? You can do that. Um, but this one just looks a lot better, right? You kind of get a much more of kind of what it's going to look like when it renders look, right? So you can switch between these right here. These are kind of like four and five uh, and six in my, right? Um, so they're right there. So the nice thing is once you start to get to kind of understand Blender's new interface, uh, it makes a lot of sense now, right? Everything's right out in the open to get to. Um, as you guys have kind of noticed with a lot of these uh, videos, I've really kind of taken a shine to Blender. Uh, it's, for me, not quite Moto good yet, but um, really in good shape, <laughs> right? Um, so you're gonna have, particularly if you wanna go with Blender, you're gonna have a pretty great option. Something that's got nice modeling tools, overall strong workflow and interface now. Um, you know, it's got pretty darn good UV and wrapping tools. It's got high risk sculpting tools, which work pretty well. It's got 3D projection painting tools that work fairly well. Um, there are add-ons, right? Like the topo tools could be a little bit better and the painting tools could be a little bit better, um, but you can actually get add-ons for like, I wanna say there's a topo add-on, a retopo add-on for Blender that's like 80 bucks. And there's like a, a painting one with layers that works in, that's in Blender, or add-ons or like plugins for Blender uh, that has layer support that's like 40. Um, so that's because they don't come from Blender, they come from people that are kind of making them, uh, those, those plugins on their own. Um, but they would give you some options. Right? They would definitely give you some options to play with there for whatever you're doing and all that stuff. Um, uh, keep in mind that some of the other things you have, right? you can actually click on mix and you'll notice that you actually have dodge. Right? So if you wanna go in here and dodge, you can dodge. Kind of lighten up some colors here. Um, obviously, um, you know, strength uh, will affect that. Um, you can pick uh, multiply um, right here. So if you want to kind of go in and darken some areas out a little bit, you can, right? So one of the neat things that you'll actually see with in Blender is the fact that it actually, unlike Mudbox, right? Because that's our what we're used to for our texture painting tools. Um, uh, Mudbox really only has kind of that dodge and burn tool, right? Um, this more like Substance Painter or Moto or even Mari. Um, actually has uh, full layer blend modes uh, on the brush. So overall, with the exception of missing some layers, um, Blender's actually got some pretty good 3D projection painting tools. It's just kind of a little bit silly that it doesn't have a layer system. Um, but ultimately, um, you actually have easy color, um, you know, clone brushes, fill brushes, um, all your different blend modes if you wanted to use them. Uh, and of course, um, texture, right? So just like we saw for sculpting, if you wanted to, you could actually go in here and do some stencil painting, right? So I could easily go in here to stencils, um, you know, pick an image, 
Uh, in this case, I think I'd have to kind of load in a new one from elsewhere because we've seen that before, right? Um, so if I wanted to, probably go to um, right here, right? And then we can go new, uh, and then we can kind of open, right? And then we can go look for something like animal skin, right? Um, now, you might be looking for these textures going, hey, where are, where's mine? Um, these are mine, guys. You have to find your own, right? <laughs> you have to get your own textures. Um, so just like with sculpting, right? You'll notice that we can, of course, go right back um, into here, um, turn on stencil. Uh, you can pick, and as, as you load in more images, they'll show up here, right? Um, and you can pick the image you want to paint with. I remember, right mouse button moves your stencil. Um, shift, right mouse button uh, rotates, and control, uh, oh no, control, shift, there we go. Uh, control right mouse button will um, rotate, shift right mouse button will zoom, right? So control right mouse button rotates, shift right mouse button zooms, right? Uh, and just, uh, uh, right mouse button, sorry. And then right mouse button um, moves. So here you have to kind of use shift and control and right mouse button configurations um, for that. But you'll notice that I can go in here and I can start to paint. And you can see that that's going to go on there. Now, in this case, I've got it on multiply, so I probably want to undo that. Um, switch back to mix. And you see how it's actually going to go in there and paint on there? Now, keep in mind also that right now I don't have a high strength, right? So I can always turn my strength up a little bit more. But you will notice that this actually is stenciling, right? So you can actually kind of stencil color on here if you want to. So just like we've seen before, right? And you might even try um, just regular color instead of mix if you want to, right? Um, so uh, remember, you can uh, actually go back and forth um, with these. Uh, if you're just looking for the pure color, you can do that, change saturation. So remember, these mix modes can give you some neat stuff. Um, keep in mind that we can also go back to texture and we could turn this back to um, view plane if we wanted to. And um, with that on, of course, what we could do is we could go to stroke and we could turn up spacing, right? Uh, and then, of course, it's gonna be stamps, right? Uh, in this case, I think I have to load that texture back in. Make sure to highlight that. There we go. And this is gonna kind of stamp it on there, right? You can kind of see that's stamping. Uh, of course, how much space you give it determines that, but you can also even go to things like drag dot to just drag it, right? Um, or you could even go to, um, you know, like say if we went back down to the kind of red image here, right? Looks like the red checkerboard. Uh, remember, you can always load in other images, right? So I can go kind of to um, uh, either load a whole new one in, um, right? Just to replace this one, right? We can kind of open an image. We could also just kind of create a new one Right, and then we could open that one up, uh, and we could actually go somewhere else to maybe pick up some interesting alphas. Right, um, I think maybe that will kind of maybe look a little interesting. Click on that, open up, and you see that will kind of come in. And now we'll see that this will be if we go to texture, we click here, um, there it is. We can click on that, and with the different strokes like anchor, right? So if we switched anchor, we kind of talked about that before, but we didn't actually do anything with it, right? Let's say I picked like a much darker kind of greenish color, right? You notice that anchor kind of does it in this really interesting way where it can kind of drop it down, right? Now in this case, you might actually need to use it as instead of a texture, a texture mask. Um, so we might go to here uh, and you'll see it there, right? Uh, let's see, tile should be okay, strip anchored. And that's not going to uh, open that wood. Um, yeah, okay. I think it's going to have to be textured. All right. All right. So uh, just keep in mind that your strokes can actually do different stuff. Um, and these can uh, drop out and do some painting if you needed to. Uh, it's not really dropping the image out like it would normally otherwise. Um, but. Uh, you'll see that you can actually kind of do some interesting stuff if you want to with your texturing, right? 
you'll probably have a lot of your sculpting and um, other painting stuff already on there. Uh, but just keep in mind that you can load in different images, you can change the mapping type um, however you want to, um, and even your strokes can kind of do different stuff, right? Um, so just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, let's uh, let's maybe turn alpha off and see if that'll do it differently. Nope. Okay. I was hoping that would just drop the normal color, but I guess not. Um, is mix going to do it? Let's see. Oh, mix is getting closer. Let's see here. Yeah, it's kind of close to what we were looking for. It's not quite exactly uh, what we want. It's kind of dropping in some black there. Um, but you might tr just trade different uh, blend modes, right? Um, add might give you something a little bit different. So, uh, you know, play with some of the blend modes if you want to. Um, but you see how kind of that drag kind of does some different stuff, uh, which can kind of be cool. There we go. Actually, add kind of, I really feel it was doing that the way we wanted it to. Uh, we might even try something like um, overlay, right? Uh, no, not overlay. Um, so remember, play with some of these blend modes though. Add seem to be working pretty well for kind of giving us some kind of kind of texturing. Be so anchored can kind of be neat uh, in terms of what it's going to do. We can turn strength up a bit more. There we go. Probably play with our colors a little bit more. Um, but keep in mind that you have these different options, right? And uh, maybe value will do it. Nah, it's too dark. Um, but Keep in mind, you're right? you don't have to use all of these. Um, you can play with different versions, right? Different stroke methods um, for coloring, right? Uh, and of course, there's airbrush if you want something a little softer um, for your stroke. Um, lines are there. So all of that stuff we showed on sculpting that can be used for sculpting can actually work used for painting also, right? Um, so you can go to texture and you can load in textures. You can do stencils. Um, you can go to stroke. You can pick different kinds of strokes to do different effects. Um, color right here. You have blend modes, right? Uh, which can kind of be neat. Um, one of the neat things also is you'll notice that you can go over to uh, right here. Ah, come on. Uh, as we can go right over to here, open this up a little bit more, and you can go right in here and you can actually paint right in the UV editor, right? And you see how that stuff will go on right there. So keep that in mind as you actually can do 2D paint without having to flatten, right? So remember, in Mudbox, we have to flatten and unflatten. Here, you just go right into it, right in there. So uh, keep that in mind, your UV editor is open and available, and you can actually use um, all of your brushes uh, in here, just like you uh, would normally. Uh, just like before, right, we kind of go right over here, we see there's image, right? And what we could do is we can go to save, and we could save this as body color, and now we have our color image, right? We can turn our armor back on, we can kind of see our armor with our normal maps. And we can see that we can start to paint color on this model. Now the coloring can be pretty simple, right? We don't have to go too nuts with it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw that um, there is a texture painting menu that you can paint in the 2D editor, uh, that you can do 3D projection painting, that um, different things like your um, uh, strokes that we've talked about before all still work here, right? So kind of all those are still available. Those still uh, work, right? Um, texturing still works. So just like we talked about sculpting, it works the same here. It's just that you're doing with color, right? Uh, you're doing with color. Uh, one of the cool things is you can um, actually have, um, of course, butt maps in this and all the different map types. We can go to materials, right? Um, and you can have all kinds of different map types in here if you want to at different times. Um, all of these can have maps painted for them, right? Our colors here. Uh, so yeah, basically I just want to make sure to get you guys to see um, how to do basic color painting. Um, yeah, uh, so I think that'll work pretty well for us. Um, like I said, you know, you don't have to go too nuts with it if you don't want to. I just want to make sure you know some of these options are available to you. All right, I think that'll be a great place to stop for this video.